Welcome to the second part of this presentation that will give you more specific information about how to participate in the project as a citizen scientist. And this presentation is specific to folks who have two milkweed patches available to them. Um, so if you're working with just one patch, you're going to want to back up and watch the video uh, that's geared towards people who are working with just one milkweed patch. The information that I'm presenting here is also in written form under the For Citizen Scientists tab on our website. So feel free to refer back to that as well. Here we're just going to give a bit more detail with pictures and illustrations that we thought would be useful. If you plan on being part of this project, the first thing you should do is make sure you're connected to us by signing up for the email list. Uh, given that you're watching this, you've probably already done this, but it's important to make sure you're signed up since this is the main way we'll be communicating with people over the summer. Uh, once folks start sending in data, we'll send out results every week or two so you can see the big patterns in how many monarch eggs and caterpillars people are seeing. And we promise not to spam you with too many emails. Here's an overview of the timeline for this study. As we post this webinar, it's late May, and we're hoping that folks will watch this now and into early June. Uh, the beginning of June is a great time to locate the milkweed patch or patches that you'll be studying. At this point, most of the stems should have come up out of the ground. If you scout too much earlier, you'll miss some because they haven't emerged yet. Next, we'll ask you to start the experiment by cutting back half of the milkweed patch around the time when milkweed in your area is beginning to flower. So for us in Michigan, this is about the middle of June, but it could be a couple weeks earlier or later for you, depending on your location, and that's fine. For this study, the timing doesn't need to be totally precise. Next, a couple weeks later, the milkweed stems will start regrowing, and then it's time to start counting monarchs and submitting data each week. And we're asking folks to submit data for at least four or five weeks, although longer is fine too. Um, so depending on when you got started, this will take you around to the end of July. Um, and finally, I'm sure we'll have some folks who hear about this project and want to get involved after it's too late to join the first round. Um, and if that's you, stay tuned, and we hope to have opportunities for another round of people to get started by cutting back milkweed stems in July and then repeating the experiment. So stay tuned about that. All right, so the first step is to locate a pair of common milkweed patches. And if you're not sure if you've identified milkweed correctly, tear open a leaf like you see here on the right, and it should produce some droplets of white latex. Latex can irritate some people's skin, so it's a good idea to avoid touching it. So when you're looking for common milkweed, there are a couple of lookalikes to watch out for. One of these is dogbane. This is a milkweed relative, and it can also make milky sap. It's in the photo on the left. And it can be tricky to tell apart from common milkweed, but uh, milkweed has a hairy stem while dogbane doesn't. And when dogbane flowers, they'll be wider and in a smaller group. You might also find other milkweed species like swamp milkweed, which is in the photo in the middle here. Uh, we don't want to use these other species in this study. Um, compared to common milkweed, swamp milkweed is found in wetter habitats. It also has pointier leaves and doesn't grow in uh, large patches usually. And the photo on the right is, is common milkweed so that you can compare it with swamp. Final note, if the milkweed patches you're looking at aren't on your property, please be sure that you have permission to study them. So we're really excited about folks who have two milkweed patches available because this gives us an opportunity to learn more about fifth instar monarch caterpillars. This is the last stage before they pupate. These are the big caterpillars you see that are an inch or more in length. And fifth instars are more mobile than the earlier stages and they move pretty quickly from one milkweed stem to another. Um, as part of this research, we wanna know if regrowing milkweed stems ultimately produces more fifth instar caterpillars, but we can't learn this from the folks who are working within a single milkweed patch because once the caterpillars get to the fifth instar, they can crawl all over the place and we don't know if they came from the regrowing part of the patch or the undisturbed part. But since you have two patches, we're asking you to cut back half of one patch, leave the other patch undisturbed, and then compare the two. And that way, if you see fifth instar caterpillars, we can generally assume that they came from eggs laid in that patch. Um, and we're still having you cut back just half of the one patch instead of the whole thing because we think fifth instars may actually prefer to move into the older milkweed stems once they get to this stage. So if you have two patches, we're hoping that you can make a fair comparison between them in this study. And that means ideally they'll be about the same size and growing in similar environments. Um, of course, they're not gonna be exactly equivalent to each other and that's okay. 
But if they're really different, like if one grows in the sun and the other's in the shade, or one is five times bigger than the other one, then they won't work very well for this study, and you may want to just focus on one of them. Similarly, if they're growing really close to each other, like within 10 yards, um, then monarch caterpillars may be able to crawl back and forth between the two once they get to the fifth instar. Uh, those patches are probably too close together. And it, again, it would be better for you to just focus on one patch if that's the case. If you found your pair of milkweed patches and it's time to get started, the first thing to do is flip a coin to pick which patch will be divided in half and cut back and which patch will be left alone. For the patch that's divided in half, you'll also need to mark the halfway point with something. In our research, we use flags or posts to mark the halfway point. You can use whatever's available to you and it can be as simple as pushing a stick in the ground. Just make sure that about half the stems are on each side. Once you've got your two halves, you'll flip a coin again to select which side will be experimentally cut back and which side will be left alone as a refuge for fifth instar caterpillars. The next step is to count the number of milkweed stems in each patch before you do any cutting. You'll need this for the registration form. If you have your patches picked out and divided up and it's time to do the cutting treatment, then you'll want to fill out the site registration form. And this is something you fill out just once for your pair of milkweed patches. This enters them into our records so that we have some basic information. There's a link to the patch registration form uh, in the detailed instructions online. Um, and it's a Google form and you should be able to fill it out on your home computer or your smartphone or whatever device you're using. The form will ask you to pick a pin number to register your pair of patches with. And this is like an ID code so we can keep track of it when you enter data later. You can pick whatever numbers or letters you like, just keep in mind that we can see it, so don't use your ATM pin or social security number or anything like that. Uh, just make sure it's something you can remember. Then you'll have to enter your state, county, and today's date. Next, we'll ask some questions about what's happening around each milkweed patch. And this is so we can tell if regrowing milkweed in some contexts works better than in others. The first question asks about the immediate surroundings of the milkweed patches, like whether they're growing in a garden or lawn or old field, et cetera. And then we ask you about the broader landscape context. So if you were to consider the landscape out to about a mile in every direction, is it mostly urban, suburban, or farmland? It's probably a combination of these things, so it's gonna be up to you to decide which one you think is the most common in the landscape surrounding your study site. Next, we'll ask you about how many stems there are in each of the milkweed patches and what tools you're planning to use to cut back the milkweed. And more on the tools in a second. Um, there's also an optional question that allows you to enter the, your latitude and longitude. So once you've filled out all these questions, it's finally time to cut back half of one of your milkweed patches. If you're under 18, you're gonna need adult supervision for this part. Um, also, if you see any monarch caterpillars on the stems that you're about to cut back, now is a good time to move them out of the way. When you're cutting back milkweed, there's always a risk that some monarchs will be lost, but so far we think that the increased use of regrowing stems can outweigh the risk that comes with cutting down the older ones. There are lots of ways to cut back milkweed in this study, and we're interested in comparing the different methods, so we're asking folks to use whatever tools they have available. Whatever you're using, please remember to stay safe and use the tools like they're intended. On the simplest end of the spectrum, you can use hand pruners or loppers or shears to cut the milkweed stems individually. String trimmers can also work well. And in our past research, we've used trimmers that have a brush blade attachment, like uh, you can see in this video here. If you have larger equipment, like a brush hog, you can use that too. Uh, of course, this is gonna cut all the vegetation in the milkweed patch and not just the milkweed stems. You may be able to use a lawnmower, although the vegetation is probably going to be higher than you're supposed to cut back with most lawnmowers. Um, so if that's your tool of choice, please proceed with caution and don't try to cut things that are beyond the intended capacity of the tool that you're using. Whatever you're using, uh, we're hoping that you'll cut the stems to somewhere around two to four inches. So that's it. If you've cut back your milkweed and submitted the registration form, then you're good to go for now and uh, you can wait until your milkweed stems start to regrow in a couple of weeks. And at that point, you'll be ready to start counting monarch eggs and caterpillars every week and submitting the data. So the final module that we've posted has instructions for how to do this last part.